order. Um, this is the Happy Zoning Board of Appeals. I'm uh, Andrew Bombardier. This is Jason Galvin and Linda Maloud. And uh, we are, we, this is a public hearing for 95 Huntington Road. It's a request for a finding under the Zoning Bylaw 5.1.7, and or variance under 6.2. Um, by Barbara Bolstein, it's a, it's a pre existing non conforming structure, we believe, on the, on the south side in the residential zone. And the applicant is proposing construction of a screen porch uh, to be attached to the front side of her house. And uh, that she's looking for existing 48 feet to 38 feet. I guess, Barbara, do you want to just tell us what you're, tell us what you're, uh, what do you have going on? What are you looking at? Um, we would like to build a screened in porch because um, our house to the it would face to the north, which is a very beautiful view. And um, <clears throat> I didn't realize that there was a bylaw that said that we had to be 50 feet back. But it turns out that the house was built in, um, I think it was 57. And I was told that the the bi the new one that said, the bio that said they couldn't be fifty feet back was um, instituted in sixty one. So it was a pre existing house, and it's not quite fifty feet back. Um, and so I our our builder applied for a permit, and it was denied. And he said that we had to appeal for a variance. And so there we go. Okay, so um, we've been having a lot of, uh, so uh, let me back up for a second. So we, so you did, so um, I discussed with you when you were going to file, and I think we did it as, a, as the finding and the variance. Um, I've later come to realize that I don't think that that is the correct way to do it. I don't think that will I think, that's sort of the way we were previously doing it, which is like a little bit of like a belt and suspenders. I think the issue with a uh, non-conforming pre-existing structure is now considered said to be, addre be addressed as a finding. Uh, and the, the criteria that we would be looking at for the finding are first, whether the um, requested change extension or alteration is um, And then second, we'd be looking at if, if the answer to that is yes, then we'd be looking um, at whether the change condition <coughs> alteration is uh, any more detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, so those are kind of the those are the two like finding things. I think from a sort of preliminary standpoint here, um, and I, I realize that we did not ask for this at the at the outset. Um, I think in a situation where it's close like this to the 50 foot, I think it probably makes sense to have a uh, plan done, uh, just a, a survey of the property to, to just uh, the boundary line and where, that, where the house sits there. Um, sometimes there's just a lot of different variables that could uh, come into play here. You know, the, the road looks like where it is, but that might not actually be the boundary of the road. So. Um, because you know, there's different setback, right? Like the road could actually be wider than like the paved part that we see. So, um, what what I think we should do is I think we should um, continue the hearing and uh, allow allow you guys to do a um, survey, property, and it's very intensive project, and just confirm the location of the of like the setback. Kind of be right on, and it, it looks like from the pictures that it's close. Um, and then at that, then if we can confirm that, that the closest part of the house is 48 feet, we, I think you, you are building closer to the road. So I think the first finding would be that it is um, more non conforming because you're building closer, you're putting something more into the setback. Um, so then I think we'd be looking at the, uh, the second stage of review would be on whether that, uh, you know, additional discrete portion. Uh, and if we find that it's not, then we can go there. If, if uh, we have a determination that's more detrimental for some reason, then we can go there. Um, 
And that's kind of how I see it. I don't, I don't know what Jason knows. The 48 feet you're, you came to, was that from the contractor that he measured? I actually thought that it was, um, and maybe it was a conversation with you, and my initial conversation with somebody from the zoning board. When I, the first time that I called about getting variants, um, the person who I spoke to said, and it looked like he was looking at some sort of a plot plan, and he said to me, it's actually, it's 48 feet away now. So that was me. <laughs> that was me. Oh, I was going to say, that's where I got and, it. Uh, that, so, so, it does, so there is a plan that, a hand-drawn plan from, I, I believe it's from a builder, and so, just at, it, it, it looks close, but I, but I, like I said, we need to have it more. I don't, I don't know. So I, 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 basically, we need more evidence, we need more information in order to make it easy. So I agree with what Andrew was saying. I think continuing it and allowing him to get the accurate plot land slash survey done, that way we can first establish if the house is not uh, pre-existing non-conforming. And then we can go from there. Um, can I just ask a question? Um, what is the difference in procedure if it's 48 feet versus if it's 50 feet? How, so, how does the so if it's, process go? So if it's, if it's, if it's 48 feet, then you'd be pre-existing non-conforming and we would be looking at whether it's more detrimental to the neighborhood uh, and the existing like conditions of the neighborhood. If you say you were 51 feet, then, then you'd be looking for a variance, and the, and the variance is a is like a a higher standard. We we would have to be looking at whether you whether you have some type of hardship, whether the whether it's whether the property is situated somewhat differently than other properties for some reason, and whether the um, hardship is caused by like some of the, the conditions. There's like specific conditions to to like get a variance. It's like whether there's soil conditions on the property, the shape of your property. Like I know your property has a hill, so there could be there could be something like that. For instance, where you say, well, I can't build on that side of the property because there's a steep hill. Well, um, right, wetlands on the back, so I can't encroach upon those. Half so my property is solid rock, so I can't. <clears throat> you know, there's different situations that people have with their properties that could be grounds for a variance. Um, but I mean, basically. Basically, I would say that you're hoping that it's going to show up that it's 48 feet, because you'd rather be pre-existing non-conforming than be looking at variance. Which is not to say that it's impossible, but that would be if if we come back and and like I said, if say it said that the closest you are is 51 feet, then we could have discussion about about the variance. But at that you know at that point, we're going to a different analysis. Properties for some reason shouldn't happen. Your original blueprints. There was a plot. I don't remember if there was a plot. There was a plot plan with that. Is that adequate? Or you, uh, yeah, I, I mean, like if. Let me help you out, man. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a surveyor. I'm not looking for work. I'm also on a sweat board in town, so I'm, I'm definitely not going to offer my services to you. But the. Accuracy necessary for them to make a decision only can be ascertained by an actual survey. Okay. So they, as Andrew said, they need that information so we can determine whether they're going to make a finding or do they have to apply for a variance. And in order to protect them and protect the town, they have to do the right thing. And unfortunately, that means you have to go get the survey done. So if there is one. I don't know what it is. I'd have to look at it, but I think it if would make sense to get it done today so that there's no question. Basically, we don't require as built for a final, for, you know, final inspection, so it wouldn't be 100%. I mean, the house was said right side. <laughs> that would be what that would be. Oh, and they wouldn't have done us. I looked, I did look on the I looked on the um, on mass land records and it's, there's many of the property transactions for the plot plans. Oh, I didn't see that. But, um, there's a there's a survey an original survey done up there a lot, but they yeah. wouldn't show the house because it'd be just a lot. Yeah, so yeah, that's all that makes this up there. That's part of the campaign. That's part of the campaign. <laughs> 
And, and part of what you said about it being detrimental to the neighboring houses, if indeed we're within the 50 feet, we have that verified. What's the determination of detrimental? Just the, I mean, it would be about like how far you're looking to go, how much closer the road is going to go from how 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 close you are to start out. It would be whether there's whether it's going to be a, a hazard for people traveling on the road because they're going to be too close to the road, but they'd be likely to get hit by a car there, but they'd be likely to be walking in a new line corner. Uh, you know, things things like that. Yeah, yeah. It could be aesthetics. It could be that. It's okay. Yeah, so the aesthetic speaks would be the the abutter saying. Don't like this. Yeah, or it could be, or like it just could be if you were in a in a uh, could be your butter saying it's going to limit my view of the road to the road. It's it's just what the idea is that the the, the current neighborhood has uh, you know potentially your house being uh, non conforming and probably has other houses being non conforming. So what we would do in that situation is we. We we look at the totality of the situation and we say, you know, if you put if you had a ten foot deck on the front of your house, how does that change? Does it change the the overall nonconformity of the neighborhood. Uh, I mean, the decks uh, and how the determination is made by you guys, or is that no, that determination be made by We would take into account whether butters have whether when the butters are concerned about the project or whether they that's you know something that we would that we could take into account. If you um I, I know we sent out the uh notices to, to the butters. Uh have you heard have you heard anything from anybody on the on the project? Does anybody have any uh there was one neighbor who called and was just curious as to what was going on. Um so no abutters are here. Yeah, or uh, <laughs> you guys are you guys are the, you guys are the last house there before a big like open lot, so you really have well you have a butter the field. The field there, yeah. Um and so you really have I guess the butters behind you. Um and so really the, there's the two butters, the butters behind us, next to us, and across the street from us. And then the, the farmer who owns the field next to us and across the street, he got two letters because they were two separate pieces of property. I think those were. And, and once we get the plot plan and then how long that's that point so we will we'll set another we'll i don't know how long it helps to take a plot plan no? and um uh, we're really, really busy right now so um, it's going to be a couple three weeks at least you set a date and then so, so we'll pick it yeah so we'll, i mean we'll pick a day tonight to keep the hearing going with the continuation of the hearing so we'll pick a day and then it'll be up to you guys to try and get the um, to get the plot plan done, I'm just, yeah. I mean, I think I do think we can. You know, our app, this is I'm a little bit. I, I will say that uh, I should have asked for this at the beginning. Um, we would have liked this been built by now to join, but I hope to get your notice set a date. See if you can get the survey plot done in the meantime. So you three are the GBA. And you know, we just had your select person? Yeah, exactly. We just decided. Ceremony. <laughs> 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 Sorry, the survey. Wow, I'm glad you're so excited about the survey. And you're the one who's the commissioner. Yeah. Do yeah. um, you also have a couple of weeks? That's interesting. A lot of people choose a date.
Let me think about it. I would be kind of doing it. You're doing your whole job. Surveying your property, isn't that just like numbers? Yes, it is. And it's. It shouldn't be a big deal. So. You were reaching for you out and you were paying me some money on the table. Yeah, exactly. And you love the people in here? Good. Oh, oh, you're in your free hearing as well. Oh, did we want to try? Um, so how about uh, July, July 18th? Jason, so I'm going to be more Friday for a month of 25th. That's, that sufficient time. He's going to Ireland on the 25th for a month. So July 18th, we're going to... Yeah, so we will continue to that point. I just want to keep it to. Yeah. 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 Is that time enough for us to get a survey? I don't want to go that long. So, well, that's that's four weeks. It's going to be eight weeks. So the 4th, 11th, 18th. I mean, this one, I mean, let's try. If they can't get it, then we can always we can just bump it, bump it again. Right? Well, I, I mean, I, I assume we'd rather. It's easy enough to bump it again. Mm -hmm. Does the 18th work for you, folks? Yeah. What can do better than planning ahead for another day to do? Can I wish to see my calendar? Aren't you having fun? It's great. So, people yeah, say we are the most popular work in town. So, I'll make a motion to continue uh, the hearing for the request of a finding to. In your meeting time of July 18th at 7 p.m. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. 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 All right, folks, July 18th, 7 p.m. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but I don't bring that. I don't think that's as much fun as. Oh, no. I'm just not excited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was in that. Thank you for, for the work you Thank you for liking, sir. If you decide you don't, I'm assuming you guys are like you know, <laughs> 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 you know, for your time. Thank you for doing what you do. Thank you for doing what you do. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. And Andy, when you play into me, you can't go away there. I know, but easier. I know, I hope you're back till the end of August. Good for you. What time's the next hearing? 7.15, so we're ready to go. Okay. I stack them, I stack them. <laughs> All right, so we're down to 20, so we will call the second hearing to order. This is uh, not a public hearing. This is just a open meeting here, and this is a request for a finding on 59 Mount Warner Road. Uh, the request by Tom Harris for a finding under Hattie's own bylaw 5.1.7. For an addition to the rear of pre existing non conforming single family home located at 59 and Alcorn Road. Um, Mr. Harris did uh, submit some uh, plans that I, I did circulate to, to everybody. Did you get on the Mr. Harris is here. So, uh, why don't you talk to us about what you're, what you're trying to do? Which is entirely with them set back. So we'd like to add some living space. Design uh, does not worsen the setback, it is entirely behind the very front of the house. Yeah. If you knew that I'd be forming your setback, it would be a little setback itself. <laughs> but uh, it wouldn't make a setback. We also think that 
There is no house sightline on this house. Jason to us. No, yeah, there's some. Uh, nothing. I don't know what it was in the name of the neighborhood. So, again, this is. Uh, so, again, this is uh, one of these issues that we were just discussing that um, uh, previously we sometimes have repeated as, as variances, but first thing. And uh, I think the two criteria we can make on are whether this is uh, uh, I think based on Um, I agree with the being that the addition is on the back definitely isn't not more not conforming. Yeah, I think if we make a determination that's not a problem. Public comment? Well, I'm a somewhat of a neighbor, and I don't know if I want him to be living in my neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, I am not talk about it. <laughs> it seems to make sense. No, it's all above board according to everything we've read in the law and it's appropriate so it's actually so it's this is one of those examples too it's kind of interesting i was telling many uh italian before is that part of part of the the reason they're they're being you know it's finding says that they want people to be back out of the house that they can't hold out they can't be they start out with people and things like that so they you know they said if you try to make every old home into a um, conforming So it's interesting. I mean, so be an example of that. That perfectly rehabbing like a. I think it makes sense to me. I don't have any concerns. It's a nice idea. Yeah. All right. So underway. Um, Yeah, I'm looking for a finding that. Plans as shown on the uh, submitted the, the <laughs> addition as shown on the submitted plans is uh, no more non conforming than the existing. So Second it. All in favor. Thank you. See, yeah, it'll be all quite nice. Start, start digging. Start digging. Yeah. Who knows what you'll find? I don't know. They find building Thank you very much. Good to meet you all. Thank you. Have a good evening. Have fun now. Yeah, they are a good one. Thank you. See you later. See you soon.
Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I put 730 on there. Or we just have to review and approve our previous minutes. Is that recorded? I think it's not in. No. It's part of our meeting, I don't know. Thank you. That. It's not a hearing. Um, I sent the draft, and he won't go back to me direction, so I have the correct printout if you want to see it, but I have something there. Yeah, I can do that myself. Let's find out if maybe the end of the day we're putting that in print. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I mean, I think we could discuss any general business. I think we should discuss any general business. I don't think we can talk about that. I think we can't do that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. 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 At variances, they were really difficult to decide. In many cases, the ability to decide what was conforming and not conforming and whether a variance was fully met. Variances should be, in my mind, should be hard to get because they are a real change in the boundaries. And we've had a variance denied for 10 feet, we had a variance accepted. Ninth, you know, a resulting setback of 10 or a resulting setback of 9. They both have different conditions. Um, and each one has to be on its own decided. But um, this, thank you, Andrew, for sending that um, Supreme Court decision around, or the court decision around, because it was helpful to see that we need to dig into our bylaw and somehow have a protocol for handling. And I think the, the process of findings, permits, yeah. and variances. We yeah. need to bring them up. And I think it's I think it is important because there um because there's so many old houses in town and I think we should have a handle on the guy handle we need to be able to like help Tom to like figure it out. Um, but obviously we're trying to like do to just do things like in a reasonable way, like where you are, we're just like as as needed board. So I mean, we can't we don't necessarily <laughs> doing like every single thing that's happening with uh, somebody with every house or somebody's putting new windows on on Middle Street, right? But like, so that's where you know I think I think it makes sense to have a good framework on on like what is what needs to come to us and then. And then Tom, then Tom will be able to also like refer stuff to us if he it's close, you know. Like if somebody's building a second story on a house that's too close to the road, I, I don't know why you think that. I guess you're putting more square footage close to the road, but maybe that's going to be like something that Tom can refer to us. Um, so, for instance, so for like with the previous case, the 59 on one road, that was pretty clear that it was not more non conforming. Is that something that would still come before us, or is that something Tom could go ahead and say? Guess, yeah, that would be the best probably determined that I right. could give that okay. I mean, if you vote as a board, one, one more member have permission to just review it at our Tuesday meetings, whichever of whoever it be, does it be the chair? Based on that Supreme Court case that you sent, it basically says that these people, they're not making things any more non-informing, they are allowed to do what they're doing by right. Yeah. right. So by right, to me, means that he can, yeah. can do it. That the zoning board is not necessary in the process. But... Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that based on the, the, the coordination meetings we have every week, that something can come up, and if, if there's concern, then okay, that's the buggy if need be. I mean, I, I think it doesn't even have to necessarily be, I think if Randy has a concern, Randy says, well, if you think about it this way, the way that road, like we talked about one at one point where like somebody was building in line with the house, but the road was curving, right, or whatever. And so, you know, like if somebody brings up a concern like that, I, I don't think it necessarily has to be a zoning board member that says, well, we want that to come to us. If 
if someone on the planning board says, I think that that's you know really a closer call or whatever. But so I think like you have people to bounce it off of. Uh, I don't necessarily know that it has to be like a formal thing where I where you know either Linda or Jason says yes, you can like you know give me permission to do it. But I think if you said, what do you guys think about this? I think it can be like something that's done through like a little bit of like an informal discussion or about things, right? Um, and for like the as of right part, and then you know for the other ones. Mm -hmm. So that what I like, and this is like I brought this up on one of those planning calls, is that what I what I like, would like us to try to get away from as a board is like I think we are <clears throat> board like you guys talk about that we like have a lot of power in terms of what we can do, but we we operate from like different bases of power. And we're always trying to like give people like reasonable outcomes and like come up with like reasonable solutions for people. But like when we are operating out of like the variance, out of our like variance powers, then we're in a vulnerable position there. And all like all it's gonna take is for some neighbor, like a neighbor might not show up at the hearing but get upset about it, or whatever. If somebody who wants to be a troublemaker, they like, could could like give us a lot of trouble. Like even though we're trying to do the right thing and we're saying no neighbors are complaining or whatever. Um, I, I want us to like be focused on how we can be operating from like our like strengths and from like a place where we're like, protecting the town and protecting like, our board from you know, people attacking us, right? So like that's where that's like why I was interested in this finding process is that like I think that this is like a way to deal with a lot of these a lot of these like small issues that were, that come up when people are building near side sidelines and everything. And I think it also is like a way to to come to conclusions in a way that doesn't like put us hanging out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Something else to, to ponder. You used the red basketball, mm -hmm. my ref soccer. You've we played played sports. But the ref is in charge. The job is to make the right call so that everybody lives happily ever after and you're gonna make somebody happy, you're gonna make somebody mad. But you do the best thing you can do to play by the rules, whatever the rules, whatever the game is. The game's got different rules. So you know you 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 gotta take the emotional part out of it. As I said to Anne yesterday, nobody wants to be a bad guy. You, say, you can't do that. <laughs> But sometimes we have to because. But, <laughs> but I think so. I think sometimes, like we, what what we were actually doing is like on, we were doing like I said at the beginning of this meeting, we were doing variances that were actually in this like finding neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But they're like, but then you're kind of really like really grasping for what a, like a variance is in that situation, and I think ultimately that like hurts us to do that because then. It does open you up for somebody else to say, "Well, no, you denied one." Yeah, right, right. And and you think you're just going along and doing doing the best you can, but like you should make sure that you, that's like a very specific tool. So you shouldn't like use that tool like over and over again. I don't think you know everybody understands. People don't understand that um, every decision is unique to the facts of that case. Now, interpretation is involved. You can't actually follow every rule in the law exactly. Because the definitions sort of evolve in that particular situation. I'm thinking about topography, the variance. You know, that's a real squishy issue, trying to determine if topography creates a hardship. So there's, you know, there's facts that people bring with there's the law. And, and then there's how we decide what's fair. Isn't that how the whole zoning system was set up first? So you just create a blanket state and you create evidence for individual specific yes. experiences within what well, law, like depending on each set of facts. And so, like, I, Linda's right. Like, I know we don't set precedent. Like, that's like the first thing they told us is like, don't, like, you're, you're viewing each thing on an individual basis. But I mean, I don't know, just in terms of like, customer service to the town, I mean, people want some type of consistency and I think, like, deserve some type of consistency. So even though you can say, hey, we can just make up our mind whatever we want, like, I mean, that's like this job is saying, uh, how are you going to figure out whether this is detrimental or whatever? It's like, I don't know, you should 
You should. Like, think about other things that you've said are non detrimental, or other mm -hmm. things you've said are detrimental, or whatever, right? And you should, like, it would be okay to treat a porch differently than a square foot addition that somebody's trying to do, or whatever, right? Like, so, I mean, I, I, I think. It's tricky, though. I mean, we turned down a um, variance request by a town by the city, so it's like nine feet. And we. <laughs> We approve one over another. How do you explain to people the reason behind each of those decisions? Yeah. It's not clear cut. It's difficult to explain, but like I remember that case where the butters came and expressed concern about the structure being built so close upon the line, and we took that into consideration. And and like in that, that's a that's a situation too. That like, I mean, I I would have no problem defending that to somebody because. They were looking to build a carport. They have a big giant parking lot, and they were saying they need to put the carport right next to this guy's property. And the guy didn't want his property; he didn't want that there. So, so, so they so completely. There, so there are a lot of things to consider. Yes. it's not so easy to say follow well, through. Right, right. You know, no, um, to be fair to people, sometimes, you know. Well, people don't understand that either because, like, we're we're thinking about all the different cases, and like if somebody's here, and they they have one case. Yeah, that's why you get to be the bad guy sometimes. <laughs> and Linda, to your point about a topography situation, go to the top of Breckenridge Road. Do you know who Tony Lestowski is? No. Okay, well, there's a, a if you go up Breckenridge, it's on the left hand side, the highest hill, the house on the top of the hill. He got a variance 25, 30 years ago to build a garage that's too close to the road. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. Because yeah. Of the steepness behind it, it would have cost him a billion dollars to, <laughs> to fill that to be able to build it. So that one made sense for topography. But if you if you look at that the criteria for variance, it's almost impossible to meet it. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Shouldn't be easy. No, if it was, if it was easy, then we wouldn't need zoning bylaws. Throw them out the window and say, do whatever you want. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that would be your preference. <laughs> um, and then you guys would be out this big paying job you have. Right. <laughs> so. With all the time to make it. Yes, it is. Wait a do, I, do we need to make a to make yeah, a motion to yeah, so leave for the building commissioner to make a determination to the board, to the zoning board? No, I don't think, I don't think you do. Okay. I think we do need to make a motion to accept the minutes. Um, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes presented by a member of the Duke and the edits verified by us and submitted them. Uh, yeah, um, I don't think I don't think we have any other. I just getting handled for us. Um, for my upcoming travel, if I need to do a Zoom from Ireland, I can do that. Because I'm going to, even on the 18th, I'm going to be Zoom as well. So I'm going to live with that meeting before. <laughs> Sad. Like it's a hard place. Very <laughs> detailed. I don't, do you want to do you want to pull an alternate for those or do you want to know the uh, uh, we can find out that I um, talk to Alex so he knows to get you set up yeah and you if you, you've got to uh, host the meeting that it's a Zoom meeting if we continue this and if we, since we've continued this one can we can we take it can we go play Zoom if we want to I I believe that's an option, but I'm not possible. Yeah. Oh, I think, no, I think you'd be better off to just have people come here mm -hmm. when they can. Yeah.
inconvenience of people to ignore because they're right. 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 And that's something to you guys to yeah. realize. <laughs> get whatever information you need. Okay. Don't just assume that what you're getting is is good enough. Um, anything that's close, tell me. Pretty, pretty close. Well, I mean, if when I'm talking, if it's two inches, yeah, that's that can make all the difference in the world to what you guys are deciding. So, anything that's within a certain Tolerance, say, look, we gotta have a survey because we can't. You can't make a decision. That, as I said this afternoon, you can't make a good decision with bad information. Right, or incomplete. Right. So, and you, that that's up. It's the onus is on the applicant to provide you with it, whatever you need. Mm -hmm. And applicants have presented false information. You yeah. know. Right. Yeah. And you know, most people won't do that. They think they what the information they've got is the real deal, but it's not necessarily so. The town of Amherst, you, you breathe that you want to build something over there, first thing they say is, Oh, it's fair. You're coming up with this. Well, yeah, well, I did tell the building commissioner when we first started over there. You're my best salesman. <laughs> It's obvious that the tone, right? But you're never in the wrong having an accurate depiction. Well, the, the difference in presentation one applicant here presented detailed drawings and specs, and that's what we need. Yeah. In every case. And the other thing that you probably would want is a rendering of what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. We do get those. Mm -hmm. Well, we do get those and we demand those as two different stories because that's going to have an impact on how it's going to impact the neighbors. Mm -hmm. I think pay racist. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm hearing. Yes. Uh, it's more paying. Well, probably so. You, you might you can double your salary. <laughs> <laughs> Not worth it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess most situations you probably can. Most people are Are you seriously yeah. suggesting that we need more money? Oh, I'm seriously suggesting it. You are. Yeah, I yeah, am. Yeah. I think they're playing. You know, this situation yeah. is like you get where someone doesn't. They're only thinking about doing death, right? Like if you're doing something, right? They're actually like marking the house and they try to park like like the house, like like um, yeah, like building a garage, they they get a right? Searching for because they need to know where they work. Yeah, they need to know when they fall over the setback. So it's all it all ends up in the same the same reasons. And um, yeah, <laughs> it's a volunteer town, but there's a point where uh, that's not sustainable in this legal environment. Yeah, well, it's not sustainable financially, so <laughs> we're stuck with what we've got. The system that we have. The tough thing is finding people with great qualifications for a zoning board, like I mean, I'm a general contractor, or, you know, I mean, I use that. When I presented myself to come on to the board, but not everyone is going to come from a building background. Well, not everybody has to, not every zoning lawyer who wants to be in a zoning board, you know. I've been on the board since 2007, and it's gotten increasingly demanding. And um, more details, more requirements, more lawyers. Um, it's very difficult. I mean, Henry brought this up at one point. It's very difficult for this volunteer board to sit in front of high powered attorneys and developers. I mean, you can just imagine. <laughs> it's it's 100 pound gorilla. Oh, we can imagine. started doing what I do in meeting with boards. It was the exact opposite. Me, I felt like. They were the Almighty, and I knew nothing. 
Okay. There's some that too. Yeah. yeah. And so it all just comes with time. The more you do it, the more you learn, hopefully. And then you can deal with that. If you, if you know the rules, then you needn't be fearful of these people. Just because they get paid big money and they can talk and talk down and whatever doesn't mean you have to listen. This is true, but they have legal knowledge. They're not trained lawyers. Well, man, they're just trained lawyers. And some of this is you need to understand the legal aspects of it. Some of it you've got to go with your guts. Guts is not the direction you need to go. Are we? Yeah. Okay. That's it? Yeah. yeah. Do we. Uh, so I'm